Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your wonderful homes. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, you're welcome to put the thumbs up, the thumbs down, subscribe or share. And returning subscribers, thank you very much for tuning in and for new subscribers. Yes, this is a bit different to what I normally do. So, um, yes, some of you might like the immigration, you might like it where it's more thought provoking, but I try to cover all aspects that are quite concerning. So today I decided to talk about being locked down with a narcissist. This lockdown is affecting our lives in a lot of different ways. And yes, we have the food aspect and yes, we have the jobs and yes, we have shortages and rations and all kinds of things. We have our young men um, feeling vulnerable, but a lot of the most, in, well, I shouldn't say the most important. I think having to live um, with someone during a lockdown has serious implications, especially if you're in a relationship with a narcissist. Now, if you've been in, if you're in a relationship with a narcissist and everything is running smoothly and, you know, the two of you are going to work and you come back in the evening, and you only have maybe a couple of hours in the evening, say from about six when you get in till 10 or 11 till you go to bed, you can actually, the um, what I will call the rescuing em empath, can actually s satisfy the victim narcissist needs. Now, a victim and a narcissist are very, very similar. So are rescuers and empaths. So that's why I'm, I'm going to call the victim narcissist a VN and the rescuing empath an RE, just to make it easier. Okay, so when that RE comes home, she's able or he is able to satisfy the demands and the needs of the VN because it's only a couple of hours and she'll probably get through those couple of hours, have a bath and think, thank God the day is over. But when it's a lockdown, you have to understand why the dynamics are the way they are. Why is a narcissist the way he or she is? Why are they so exhausting and draining and hard to please? and hard to satisfy. So I've written down a few notes. Um, I don't know how long this video is going to be, so you're welcome to pause it. Go and get yourself a cup of tea or a glass of wine, put your feet up and put me on loudspeaker. And yes, because I am just going to cover quite a bit in this video, because it's really important that women, especially who live with narcissists, feel supported and that's what I'm hoping I'm doing. Um, so I first, I'm first going to put this disclaimer. It's best to understand a narcissist. They are not vindictive people. That might be, that might sound surprising, but they're not vindictive. They don't deliberately go out of their way to hurt you. They genuinely believe that they are entitled to your services, to what you provide, to your assistance, to your support. And because they genuinely believe they're entitled to it, they don't appreciate it, they take it for granted, and they are uncaring. So that's the first thing. So a narcissist is not a calculating person who is out to give you a hard time. They genuinely believe they're deserving of the attention that they're getting. So once you understand that, that will help you understand the rest of what I'm going to tell you. Their perception is their truth. So because they feel entitled, that's what they actually believe. They actually believe that they deserve to make all these demands and have you satisfy them. So they believe that they're entitled to have the attention. They believe they deserve to be rescued. They believe they were put in your life for you to rescue them. 
and they believe they're more, their needs are more important than yours. So can you imagine somebody who has that mindset, who genuinely believes that? Their demands get more and more and you don't get no appreciation, no gratitude. You just get taken for granted. And you imagine that in a lockdown situation. Day after day, demands getting more and more intensive, more and more frequent. So narcissists are very needy, but they do not perceive themselves as being needy. Like I said, when they're asking for things, they just feel as though they're entitled. It's a bit like a child. You know when a child is born, it's crying and crying, and the mother, when it's just born, the mother keeps giving it milk and seeing to all its needs, and then after a while, she's like, for Christ's sake, like that child just, you just have to leave that child to cry because... If you keep feeding it or picking it up every time it screams, it's going to expect it. That's just like a narcissist. If you keep jumping up and every time they scream, every time they ask for something, you keep attending to them and satisfying their needs, they'll be forever, forever demanding and bawling and crying and asking, not physically crying, but making that vie for your attention constantly constantly until you meet it until you get fed up and say enough is enough okay so that like i said they're like babies who scream when they when they do get attention they crave and you are the proverbial mother who is meant to give it to them when they don't get their needs met or what they believe they are entitled to and things start falling apart because they were so reliant on you they will blame you for what is going wrong in their lives. So regardless of what you're doing in the home, in lockdown, regardless of what you're doing to please the um, narcissist, when things go wrong, you're going to get the brunt of it. You're going to get the blame. There is something that you might have done or you haven't done while they're in the position that they are in. That is a narcissist. They will convince themselves that the, that. Things were great before you got into their lives, regardless of how long you've been together. And that any problem they have had since they met you is because of you. You have brought that problem about. And they actually believe it. They actually believe it. As long as you meet their needs, physical, psychological and emotional, they will be okay. But when their needs get too much for the partner, i.e. the RE, and the RE withdraws, they will throw their toys out of the pram just like a baby and have a tantrum. Oh, you don't care about me. You don't care about me. Everything's falling apart. I've lost everything. I haven't got this. My arm hurts. You know, I've lost my job. I've lost my house. I ain't got no money. You know, everything's going wrong and you don't care. And they'll go on and on and on, appealing to your empathetic side. But depending on how many times you've heard it, the empath will either respond to it or they will just take it on the chin. And the... Uh, the I've said these initials now and I haven't got them written down. The rescuing, no, the victim narcissist, VN. I have to remember that. The VN will convince themselves that you are the reason for the situation they're in and they will take no responsibility for their behaviour. So even though they've been imposing on you time and time again and taking and taking and taking and asking and asking and asking, they won't see all of that as you assisting them. They will look on the one time you have said no or have withdrawn and harp on that as the big deal. And they won't consider that their bad behaviour, they're taking you for granted, they're just exploiting you and they're just um, not showing any appreciation for all what you've done to them. They won't take any responsibility for that why things are going wrong for them now. No, they will believe 
that because they believe they're entitled to it and because they expect you to serve them and when you stop serving them, you are the reason why they're in the predicament they are in. That's the way they perceive it. They do not take responsibility for their behaviour or their attitude. So, because they believe their illusion is truth, there is nothing you can do to pacify a narcissist. They will believe you're trying to trick them or manipulate them. You cannot negotiate with a narcissist. You cannot tell them that it's their sense of entitlement, insensitivity, selfishness, ingratitude and lack of consideration why karma has knocked on their door. Because they just won't believe it. Most narcissists have a victim mentality. That's why I call them victim narcissists. narcissists. And therefore, they blame everyone else but themselves for what goes wrong in their lives. When times are good, they believe they are entitled to it. So when they do not show gratitude, when times are bad, they will blame you or someone else for it. They genuinely, do not, they genuinely do not believe or conceive that what is happening to them or has happened to them is as a result of their behaviour and attitude and that their experience, what is happening to them, their bad experience that they're experiencing now, that you've withdrawn all of your help and your support and rescuing them is an effect of their behaviour. They don't get it. Now, now that you understand your narcissist and understand that she, he is not being vindictive, but genuinely feels deserving of having their needs met because they were not met in infancy, infancy, it will help you to train him to be different, just like a child. When a child cries, a mother trains that child by not picking him up every time he cries. The child learns that making a fuss will not always get attention. So with your narcissist, you cannot give him or her everything they want when they want it. You need to withdraw. If you're living with a narcissist and are watching this video, you are probably a rescuer or an empath. So I combine those two, rescuing empath, because that is what you are if you are with one. Because rescuers attract victims and empaths attract narcissists. So what will happen during a lockdown is that as a rescuing empath, you will try to make him see the positives. You will try to make him feel better by going out of your way. You will satisfy his sexual needs, hoping it makes him happy. And you'll do all of that kind of stuff, trying to make things right, trying to keep the peace. However, instead of making him happy, his needs will increase no matter what you do to try and make him happy or her happy. I'll talk. I'll say him because I'm talking about mostly about women. As the victim narcissist needs, needs intensify, the rescuing empath will become more demanding. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Sorry, as the victim's as the victim narcissist needs intensify, he or she will become more demanding and more negative, despite your efforts. The VN will believe that the world is against him or her and will expect you to put it right. So the narcissist, when all of these things are going wrong in a lockdown and, you know, he hasn't got the food he wants or he hasn't got the drinks he wants, he can't access his cigarettes, he can't access his drink, he can't go to the pub, he can't go to play darts, he can't do none of that. Somehow you're going to be blamed for it. Something you did or something you said is why this situation occurred, even though it's a global situation. And it would be impossible for you to put that right. So the empathetic rescuer will find this behaviour attitude exhausting. She, he will find him too demanding, unappreciative and uncaring. During lockdown, feelings of resentment on both parties will intensify. The rescuing empath will start reflecting on how better her life was without him. And she will realise that the victim narcissist is holding her back. Just like a mother who has to be cruel to be kind to her child by not giving him everything she wants, she'll have to withdraw the supply. So, 
how do you how does the rescuing empath cope how do you cope living with a narcissist in a lockdown you need to stop rescuing you need to stop feeling their pain and anguish and ignore their guilt throwing you need to stop taking responsibility for their misfortunes that they have created themselves realize that an re will always attract a vn it will be initially satisfying. It will feel like love as long as the VN is receiving everything. He'll probably say something like, I'll never let anything bad happen to you. And because you're happy rescuing the narcissist, you'll probably say something like, as long as we're together, we can conquer anything. And at that point, a contract is formed between the two of you. Not an obvious contract, but a contract is formed. So by, you, by him saying, I'll never let anything bad happen to you, and by her saying, as long as we are together, we can conquer anything, that is the VNRE contract. So what will happen during contract is that abiding by the contract gets draining and frustrating and resentment builds in. So as long as you understand what is happening during the lockdown and why things are happening and taking a turn for the worst, it will help you manage your emotions and actions better. It's okay to be angry and if resentful, take responsible responsibility for your emotions through this period of lockdown and start doing what's best for you. You will not want <clears throat> you will not be able to walk out during the lockdown. So think of ways you can kindly withdraw, gently gently and respectfully deal with the situation and each other, interact with each other. Understand that a VN will always have something happen to them. They will always want help. And because they're negative, nothing goes right for them. There is always something. Woe is me. Why does this have to happen to me? Why am I bothering? Why doesn't anyone understand me? My arm hurts. I've lost my job. My car's not working. I'm losing everything and you don't care. And they'll probably panic. And they'll feel despair and resentful because you're not jumping to their beck and call like, you, you, like they're used to. And usually they quickly find somebody else who will be another source of supply. So no need to feel sorry for them during the lockdown. They must learn to accept responsibility for their lives and realise that you're not their mother. So expect guilt tripping during a lock lockdown. He's, he's used to turning to you when things go wrong because you've always been available and responded quickly. Now she or he will mull over thinking and creating more negative thoughts about you and their situation. And those negative interpretations end up coming true for them. So by making yourself unavailable all the time, you can change the dynamics. Instead of every time they ask you something, you say, OK, darling, OK, baby. And you just jump and do it because that's what you do on automatic pilot. You're trying to please. You're going out of your way to please. So you want to keep them happy. So you jump and you do everything straight away. So you'll have to learn to not jump and do it straight away. You can still do it, but you wait 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, a couple of hours, even 24 hours. You don't jump. So, and that's assuming you're not in an abusive relationship, of course, where you think, oh my God, I have to do it because he's going to top me down and you haven't been able to escape. Then, of course, you have to use your discretion and you have to manage this in a way that is safe for you. I'm talking about I'm talking to people largely who are not too who are in safe narcissistic relationships. The narcissistic you can be in some narcissistic relationships where they are emotionally and um, financially abusive. So emotionally, financially, and psychologically abusive, abusive as opposed to physically abusive. So this is more for those who are emotionally abusive and psychologically abusive and probably financially abusive. So expect tantrums. 
The VN is used to preempting any problems, being proactive, solution focused, and goal oriented while sorting them out. You'll find that with uh, rescuing Empath, she'll remember the date his car is due to be taxed. She'll remember the birthdays of all his family members, and she'll go and get cards for them, and she'll remind him of when his car's going to be taxed. She's going to remind him of um, when. He, Maybe his insurance is due. She'll probably um, take his clothes to the cleaners. She'll remind him. Well, what she is, she's proactive. She actually thinks for him. So when that stops happening and he has to start remembering these things for himself, that's when he's going to throw a tantrum and try to make her feel guilty and responsible for his dilemma that he has created. But just keep calm, don't get angry, and agree to whatever it is you he's asked you to do in your time, not his time. When you feel comfortable and ready, emotionally charged, and, you know, um, psychologically prepared to attend to his needs, that is when you do it. In your time, looking after yourself, not at his beck and call. That is important. This is about taking back your life, taking back control of your life, looking after yourself and doing what is best for you. I mean, we all want to be, well, most of us want to be helpful. We want to help others, but you do it in a way that is healthy for you. Um, I understand that everyone is manifesting their own vibrations and you can get drawn into a negative cycle during lockdown if you do not create a healthy distance. So build small achievable goals. I won't respond to his request immediately. I'll, I'll provided he's not genuinely sick or, you know, really in dire need. I'm not talking about those. Of course, you have to use your common sense when I'm giving you this advice. So if he's sick or, you know, there's something wrong with him, I'm not telling you to ignore him. I'm talking about in a healthy, you know, fair, all things being equal relationship. You can let him wait 30 minutes, 24 minutes. You know, if he says, look, I need you to um, get my socks for me or the newspaper down the road. Some of them do that, you know. They have them. They have their missus at their beck and call. And normally say, oh, yes, baby, yes, darling, yes, darling. You jump off, you put, you stop what you're doing, you put on your coat, you put on your shoes, you go up the road for them, you bring them back their newspaper. And they just take it. Some of them don't even say thank you. Because they expect it. They expect you to go out of your way. They expect it. And because they expect it and you deliver it, they don't appreciate it. They take it for granted. So you also, when you start withdrawing, the supply, you can actually, you are in a position to negotiate. Look, my darling, I can do this if you're prepared to do that. And you can feel comfortable at that point. Before, you can't do that because they are in the expectation mode or an entitlement mode 24-7. But when you start withdrawing and they realise their supply is diminishing, they're more likely and more willing to negotiate. Maybe just for a short while, it won't be for very long, but long enough for you to get a little reprieve. So put your ego to one side and stop playing the hero. Stop trying to rescue, like I said. Love yourself. It's very important. Put yourself first, your needs first. Uh, be grateful what you have. Um, Realise that the VN will always feel sorry for him, regardless of what you do, so don't waste your time. Get closure, forgive yourself for choosing wrongly, for making the same mistake over and over again, for trusting the wrong person. Forgive others, take ownership for your feelings, trust yourself to move on if that's what you want to do. Don't let past hurts define you, self-evaluate daily and be aware of your need to rescue and feel for others and find out where that comes from. Because otherwise, if you don't kind of understand why you have the need to rescue, why you feel for other people over and above yourself such that when somebody says, look, 
oh, I don't have this and I don't have that and you don't have it either, but you feel as though you have to borrow money to try and satisfy that person or go out of your way to do that for that other person. Ask yourself, why do I put myself on the back burner? Why am I second best? Why am I treating myself as second best? So in a lockdown, it's extremely important that you make sure your needs are met first before you attend to the needs of the narcissist. And if that means putting him, we're talking about him for now, if that means putting him on hold for 15 minutes, half an hour, you know, three hours or 24 hours, so be it. But that is the only way you're going to get through with a narcissist during a lockdown. And I hope this has been helpful. Bye-bye.